and greetings and welcome yet again to another live broadcast of Building Legacy here on Oz Speaks. This is your host, Senate Dr. Chensira. We have a long name, Chensira Davis Kahina Hedi Shetapaharu. So for the purposes of our engagement, we will uh -huh. leave it at Sister Queen Dr. Chen. And we're really okay. excited about being able to bring some of our discourse together. It's always an honor and a privilege to have sisters sharing ideas, sharing action programs, sharing their passion, and of course their perspectives that allow for each and every one of us to know what's going on in global affairs. It is also a wonderful opportunity for each and every listener and viewer to know that Oz Speaks really focuses on interdisciplinary awareness, transculturalism, heritage, preservation, environmentalist perspectives that help us have an earth that we can survive and live on. And most importantly, we are about the culture, healing, arts, technology, and spirituality that restores life. And we bring that in a revolutionary way, in a very progressive way, in a very interactive way to the best of our ability. For persons that are not familiar, I encourage you to just take a moment and just peruse some of the previous broadcasts of Building Legacy, an initiative started with my illustrious African Queen Mother Warrior, Sister Dr. Sandra Richards. And I'll pause for a moment. With that being said, and because I just love the opportunities that are always afforded to us, I like to bring up some word sound power just for a second so we can talk about having a purpose before I introduce our most illustrious powerful guest. Freedom. And all you do, just make sure that your purpose is true. Have a purpose in this here life, so your life ain't for a stray. I live a purpose each and every day, so we can live in joy. I have a purpose in all you do, just make sure your life is true. We always attempt to have some kind of musical engagement involved in that. And knowing that we have a powerhouse with us this morning, afternoon in South Africa, coming all the way live from South Africa. This is fabulous. And we're really excited yeah. about that. Is Sister Queen Nkeke Funani, who is a Pan-Africanist and, and also one of the founding members of an all arts movement, IMBA. And also she serves as a radio host. And I must say par excellence, I've had the joy and privilege of being <laughs> on her broadcast of her show, <laughs> Building Africa with Love. Make sure you remember that, Building Africa with Love. And that of course is with the national broadcaster SABC in South Africa. In addition to that, I found a few little extra clues about this powerful sister queen. And she's also mm -hmm. a musician and serves as a sales project executive for SABC and many other pieces as we're talking this morning. And I just would like for our beloved sister queen, a warrior, pan-Africanist, media technologist, artist, cultural creative powerhouse to just share, you know, we definitely welcome you here on Building Legacy with Oz Speaks. It's an honor to have you. Thank you so, so much, Sister Queen, <laughs> Dr. Shinzira. It's such an honor to be on this platform, to share myself with you and the viewers and the listeners at home. Um, it's, it's actually so befitting that you started this with a song because music <laughs> speaks the loudest. You know, music speaks the loudest, you know? We send our messages through yes. music and, and that's the quickest way in the shortest space of time that you can get a message across. So, so thank you for that. Um, I do all these things in the art space, as you've said before. 
as you've said before, uh, so I'm an artist and art is very, very close to my heart. I use this tool and this art form to convey the messages that I feel many of our African brothers and sisters may have forgotten uh, because of all the problems, all the things that they are going through in their daily lives. So they're getting caught up in all this chaos, right. you know? Uh, so as a movement, we thought, let us be conscious about what we do with the message that we convey and be intentional about mm -hmm. changing the paradigms that are out there, especially within the African space. Correct. So this, this is something I'm very passionate about. I'm very intentional about it as well. Um, and it's, it's something that I started many years ago. I think I was still in high school when I made this realization that I want to be a tool and a okay. voice that will always speak to our people, that will always be the voice of reason and bring forth a reminder to them of who they are because we cannot move forward or uh, bring about the change that we need in our current existence if we do not know who we are as a people. So Correct. that's what I do. <laughs> well, that's you do we that. Do. And you, I'm, I, I really am grateful for you taking that much time to even give people the context in which you do your work and that it is intentional and that it is with that layer of not just consciousness, but a, a passion that is grounded in a spiritual grounding, which many persons tend not to do. I want to take a very quick moment, and we definitely want to say, Sinawa a day day, Sinawa, Sinawa a day day, Sinawa, Sinawa a day day, Sinawa. Definitely happy Earth Strong to you. I mean, you have to let people know. I mean, we know that you're taking some time, even from family and celebrations for you on this yeah. day to join mm -hmm. us here. And that's why it was so fitting for us to start with music, to share a musical piece that's from the A New Ensemble. That was in the days when I would do, go into studios and record. And I had oh, the wow. joy, privilege to share that, you know, with one of our award-winning artists from here and around the globe, uh, Brother Army. And so I always tell persons, Google Army's music so you can hear some of that powerhouse energetics that comes through a reggae R&B fluidity mm -hmm. and how yeah. persons have been able to bring that even to more contemporary sound power because music is a weapon and it can be a, it can be a weapon and a tool for transforming our mind our body our soul our spirit our consciousness and you've done you've shared that in such a short time and we're very very grateful would love for you to share with our viewers and listeners a little bit about just how things are in South Africa and specifically because South Africa is so large, where are you <laughs> based now in South Africa and what are some affairs, some issues that you'd like for the global community to be aware of? Um, I'm currently in the Northern suburbs of South Africa, Johannesburg to be specific. Um, there's a suburb called Linseria. Uh, I don't know if I'm a zoom all the way in, but that's where I'm based. And South Africa, currently, we, we're dealing with mm -hmm, a lot of things. We're dealing with the power problems. We, we're having power outages every single day right now. Mm. Uh, we are affected by fuel increases. You know, mm. um, Obviously, everyone is aware of what's happening globally from in the Russian Ukraine situation. So um, we are feeling that as well in South Africa. Um, mm. People are disgruntled um, for many reasons. The, the service delivery issues, uh, we are dealing with, um, what, what's this? We, we men are, are ill-treating women, you know? So gender-based violence is a big thing that we're dealing with right now. And many people are trying to come up with campaigns and they, they're trying to conscientize people about the scourge that we're faced with uh, to, to bring about a solution uh, my platform is one of the platforms where we are trying also to play our part through uh, the radio show that I have, through the songs that we have, that we make. Um, funny enough, this year especially, we decided that we want to every month uh, zoom in on a theme. We want to record a song every single month, zooming in on a theme, 
and just kind of bringing it into people's minds, you know, because that's the only way people can learn and change many things uh, for themselves. That's that's just a second. Someone just walked in. That's okay. Yeah, so, fine. So, 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 family. Beautiful. Sorry, this is family. Uh, this is family. Yeah, and, greetings, family. Yeah, we're we're greeting you from. Let them know we're greeting them from I I Saint Croix, all the way yeah. on the other side of the Atlantic, little north. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so apologies for that. So, so we, we are um, dealing with such issues currently in South Africa. Uh, the politics of it. Um, oh, okay. So I, that way person I saw my screen. All right. I, some, you just disappeared. So I thought something happened with my network. Okay, no, no. We see you. We have you. All right. And what we're showing is just so for persons that aren't as familiar with South mm -hmm. Africa, that they can just yes. get an idea from this map to just be able to see where the where the cursor is circling around Johannesburg, and as you were sharing the names of the, they doesn't they do not have the specific smaller area names, but at least we get an idea of what you of meant where? by north, west, like what are northeast inside of um, South Africa proper. You know, so for persons that only know about Cape Town, I just need you mm -hmm. to know. <laughs> There's many other provinces here. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yes. Thank you. I just yes. wanted to be aware. Yeah. All right. And, and in the recent in the recent past, we've we've been dealing with a lot of suicide rates, mm. uh, which obviously within the art space specifically, and mm. what we are faced with in South Africa within the art space is that um, the playing field is not level. So there's a lot of talented individuals that are not making it onto platforms, that are not having their voices heard. In order for you to have your voice heard, you need to pay bribes. You know, it's, it's, it's a very ugly situation. Um, so just to touch on this, what Building Africa with Love and IMBA, because IMBA is a movement. What right. we do as a movement is we have taken people that are struggling, people in marginalized areas, and we are assisting them into getting into the art space, into television, into radio, into music. Okay. We're using our own funds to get them into the space because we know exactly how difficult it is. We have fought the fight, we are in the space already. So we, we just cushioning the journey for them and we're putting them into these spaces. So okay. uh, that's how we're trying to just assist in getting the content that needs to be out there onto the platforms that are needed. Uh, the biggest problem currently in South Africa, especially in the art space, is that the content is not conducive. Um, uh, I feel the content is the content uh, that that uh, is contributing to the social ills that we're facing right now. So everyone is kind of migrating towards it and doing things in a specific way that is not uh, conducive to life. You know, it's not pro-life in my view. You know, uh, you can't expect to be telling people to treat women a certain way and expect a different result. So we are, these platforms need to be used responsibly because right. we are responsible for the lives of people, you know? Right. Um, yeah, so, so, so that's, that's, I really am summarizing everything that's happening here, but that's the gist of what we are dealing with as a country. Yeah, well, I, I would love for persons to also get familiarized, you know, visuals are everything. And just mm -hmm. so persons have an idea of that image that you have on your Facebook platforms and other social media platforms of IMBA. And I love that piece, arts, your weapon against poverty and unemployment. So persons really recognize that the arts is not where it's like a, not the fall over and that there isn't an economic driver inside of the cultural creatives, the creative arts, visual arts, performing arts, fine arts, musical arts, the entire entertainment industry. It's, and sometimes persons forget and think, you know, we need drummers. Can you ask the brothers down the road to come drum? It needs to be the same professionalism. If you said, is there a midwife? Is there a midwife up the road? And you know that there's a, a, a value given as well as value added when we start to talk about that. So I just desire it for persons. I love that fist, you know, that I love that power fist. And I love that you've got points inside the hand showing what we can do together. That's really a powerful visual that I feel is very, very important. One of the things I'd like to ask is how long has Emba 
been in place and what are some other activities that you would like to share with our listeners and viewers? Uh, EMBA was conceived in 2013. Um, the very first project we actually did was we did a song on Nelson Mandela, the late Nelson Mandela, when he was sick, uh, a song came about. Um, maybe let me just bring some background to this. Um, my husband and I formed EMBA. So, so it's a family um, movement, but everyone essentially becomes a family member once they join us as well. So the music that we create comes from dreams. He dreams these, these songs and okay. we go into studio and then we create the music. So this was one of the songs that actually came to him and it says, who am I? That's the name of the song, Gubani, who am I? Mm -hmm. So in the song, we zoom into who Nelson Mandela is, his mm -hmm. journey. Uh, we, we wrapped it up in about three minutes or so. And um, yeah, that was our first, first, first ever recording when we uh, went into studio. But prior to that, we were training students in the TV space. So we would do workshops on weekends. We'd get students from marginalized areas as always. The oh. township, the townships, I don't know if you know what townships are. These are- um, oh, oh, yes. But yes. please explain, but no, but, but express that for our listeners and viewers <laughs> so that we're all so, learning together. Thank you. Please continue. So the township is is is, is not it's it's um not a favela to say. The closest thing I can come in terms of my explanations are favelas, but something close to that. It's like little communities of black people, you know, um with different names and different mm -hmm. uh, cultural groups within those areas. So there's a nice mix of Zulu, Kosa culture, Setswana, you know, all these uh, languages that we have within South Africa. And um, so we would get students that need assistance from all these areas that come into one central place where we are. We'll teach them acting, we'll teach them emotional intelligence uh, skills, you know. Um, we've just been very blessed as individuals that we, our journeys had actually enabled us to be able to do these things. So we've imparted it into people since before 2013, when we officially started IMBA. Okay. And um, so that's the, the one part that we do. We do training, we do music, we do radio. We um, assist people in scripting. The, the entire film progression from starting to get your concept to writing to, um, filming it to producing the content. We have all those skills. So we impart that into people and we assist them to actually produce their own work. We okay. assist people in recording music. Uh, content is very, very important to us. Yeah. So we assist with the content that goes out there and uh, we assist in promoting the music, getting them on online digitally, getting them gigs. Uh, everything's yeah. done from our pockets. We haven't had any assistance from the Department of Arts and Culture. Uh, a function, I think this, this is actually a function they should be carrying up, but uh, wow, the train is moving. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's, train is how, moving. Yeah, that's how yeah. it works. That, that is how it works. And, and that's, that's not particular to South Africa, as I, I need to share that. <laughs> that seems to be All right. right. That is a, a global issue of concern. And, and I say that in the space of certain places do not place arts and culture and heritage mm -hmm. with the same degree of importance as other areas, overlooking that arts, culture, and heritage are part of the core of our humanity mm -hmm. and that they're also part of the core of our economies. Persons operate and do things and are motivated to engage in things and are productive citizens through arts, culture, and heritage, and those things that are connected to those industries. And that's something that I'm, I am so grateful that what IMBA is doing, and if membership outside of South Africa is, is permissible, let us know, because that's something that's really important and critical for persons to be aware of. One of the things that I have been here doing while you were speaking is actually looking at the press pack I asked for information and that's why I appreciate you, Sister Queen and KK, because you were like, you need information? Bow, <laughs> it's a PDF. Bow, this is the link. And I'm very grateful because that's something intergenerationally that we 
sometimes some of the elders may not be as digitally engaged. And this provides a way for us to have our, our powerful engagers that are younger to provide that skill, talent, and expertise. And for that, we're very grateful. It's also important, you know, as I look at some of the materials here, that persons are fully aware, cognizant, and, and accepting of the fact that we're going beyond borders. When we speak of building legacy and uplifting culture, arts, heritage, and all that's connected, we are speaking about agriculture. We are speaking about economies that build society, you know, villages, communities, nations, societies, et cetera. And we are speaking about environmental sustainability because all of these discussions will be unimportant and outright useless, futile, if we cannot connect all of these arts, culture, heritage, education, technology, spirituality pieces to make sure that our earth can continue to give us a home because that's what we're talking about, right? And so yes. I'm really grateful for that. And then I also had a chance when I was looking at some of this information to get really excited because these are like, these are artists that, you know, you have taken from very humble beginnings. And many of these artists are now like zooming through the roof and are, are really bring, restoring the balance of how important music is. Yes. I'd love for you to speak on some of the artists that have come through. Please share with us. Well, we'll start with some of the artists that come through. And then I really would love for you to share with us. I, I was going to share the song that you sent to me, but there may yes. be something that you may want to share instead. That would be a fitting for us as we're honoring, you know, we're, we're speaking about doing these types of connections more often. We're speaking sure. about how do we and persons that understand Dr. Chen Zira will know where I'm going. We do this, and yes, we do it freely. There has to be reciprocity. And when we speak of reciprocity, we're speaking of that divine ancestral principle of Ma'at, of truth, justice, order, reciprocity, balance, divine righteousness, and yeah. harmony. And the more we do that, then when our artists come forward, we will support them. Even if you just buy one song, from their, you know, from their CD baby or Amazon, or what is it, Apple Music, wherever, but encourage support, even if it's in a small way, if you can do the whole album, even better. Because that's how we show our reciprocity, our love, our connection. And that's how we really rebuild Africa. It's not that Africa hasn't been built because it's yes. the beginning of the beginning. However, this is a great way for us to utilize our mouths, our thoughts, our actions, our deeds by supporting these artists that are providing a wide array of, of music. And I also would um, have had the permission to share particular pieces from some of the artists here in St. Croix mm -hmm. in particular, and just you know within our Caribbean space, because that's what we're moving towards. How do we make, how do we keep the Atlantic from being a divisive ocean? instead of a inclusive and welcoming ocean. We know it's history and we're re sure. we are restoring, we're gonna have a new narrative. Our grandchildren, okay, in my case, great grandchildren <laughs> will be exposed to a new narrative that, that's practiced so that we no longer just speak of the Atlantic in its negative space, but that we're restoring positive relationships, positive experiences, positive work. Okay, I got excited. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, so, so you asked about the artists that we have managed to assist with in the space. One, um, there are two gentlemen from KZN, that's another province within South Africa, in Duba Duba village. There's a gentleman called Skalo Malu. Um, his story was actually quite funny because he heard about our, he actually got hold of our CD. And he says he heard an interview of us on the radio station at some point, and then ran into my husband who is also singing with me as well. He's a singer as well. And uh, when he met him, he burst into song. He burst into song. He told my husband that he wants to join Imba. And I think that just blew him away because it just, it, it's not something that happens. People, people are very shy about the things that they want out of life, you know, 
And for someone to be so brave and upfront in front of everyone and just burst into song and tell you what they need um, was quite amazing. So we started our journey with him. Uh, we took him into studio. We record. We stayed with him actually for a while uh, into our house because he had just landed into Johannesburg. He didn't know anything about this uh, province that we were in. We took him and we stayed with him for three or four months in our house. Uh, we did a, some training. We did um the songs that we recorded for him we got him into studio he's online right now there's a very very beautiful song a love song called isinganda mate right this is this is zulu <laughs> and what it basically means is my love uh he speaks of his hardship in the song he speaks of how this lady has stood with him through thick and thin and you know now he's making it he's doing well and everything is doing it's a happy ending at the end. So, so storytelling in that sense also forms part of the journey with whoever comes to Imba. So it's Kalo, and there's also Ubu Sebuyeza, who's also uh, dealing with a different genre called Umpa <laughs> This This is also another ethnic sound. This is Zulu. Uh, yeah. he, he does like traditional songs, you know? Nice. Uh, yes, he, he speaks to traditional music. We've got him, we've got Masha, who's a poet from uh, Bulukwane. That's another province that deals entirely with a different language altogether. It's Isipedi. Uh, so it's very diverse. We, we really do embrace all cultures in that way uh, because culture at the end of the day, according to myself, is just something we identify with, you know? Uh, at the end of the day, we all want people. Uh, there are a lot of similarities in how we do things, even across the border from South Africa, where I am. Uh, and, and that's the, it's, it's, it's a shame that we face so many problems, so many xenophobic attacks on our African brothers, because we fail to recognize the similarities that we have as a people. Uh, but anyway, so it's though it's Masako, it's, uh, it's Kova, a young man, he's 21 years old. He's got the fresh uh, flavor, you know. The reason why we took him in is because he's young, you know, he's vibey, but we, we, we like the message that he pushes. Uh, okay. It's not your typical, you know, what's out there, the, the nonsense. <laughs> and I think that's as simple as I can put it. Uh, he's mm -hmm. very conscious. He's very aware of his environment. He's very aware of his Africanness. And that, that comes out in his music and his performances. And, um, we also do our performances together as Imba as well. All these people I've mentioned, we go on stage together. I sometimes back them as well, because we recognize that music is, 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 is it's such a special thing. You, you can be a lead singer, you can be a backup singer, but at the end of the day, it's about the package and what you bring uh, at the end of the day, you know? So um, that's what we do as Imba. Um, it's Imba family, it's a movement. We mean it. We we are one really big family, uh, yeah. pushing one message, bringing people from different walks of life. There's a guy I forgot someone from Zimbabwe. We do have someone from Zimbabwe, and just recently someone from Congo who also joined us. He's, he's called Chamberlain. Um, uh, so we've got the Congolese uh, flavor also coming in. Uh, that happened this week, by the way. And um, yeah, everyone's welcome. This is an African movement, you know. Uh, it's not just restricted to people in South Africa. Anyone that wants to be a part of this movement is more than welcome. Right, well, we're very grateful that you have given like the foundational piece <clears throat> that is linked to IMBA and how that message is helping artists to come and reestablish the purpose of arts and re because that's what it can do we we have artists from way you know we can go way way back and i'm going to kind of bring in some of the other portions of africans that influence music cool traditions even in the caribbean as well as throughout uh, north america canada central america etc and it's art you know artists like fela kuti you know yeah. shifted with giving messages even at the cost of, of his balanced living existence and ultimately um, having him become an ancestor you, younger than intended, right? It's powerful to see the, the connection of activism. And I chose 
Fela Kuti, again, it's been continuing with his sons, you know, Stay Un as well as Femi and others. And it's wonderful to see the legacy keep moving with music as a weapon, something he was instrumental to promoting around the globe. The reason I chose Fela Kuti is more so because of who his parents and particularly who his mother was and yeah. the role that Funmi Layo, Horansom Kuti, may she continue to rest in peace and rise in paradise and her work, good work be honored. It's important that we remember the activism that's tied to this musical and these musical traditions and the messages and the importance of not wasting our energy on producing music or any form of the arts that are just for the sake of music and art, that they are uplifting as essential, that they are teaching tools, that they are not just educating, not just entertaining, but they're actually edifying and, and building up how we receive the message, how we promote the message and the types of things that we do in our day-to-day -day life. If you keep listening to over-sexualized or counterproductive violent culture in your sound, then that's what's going to permeate and be prioritized in your daily life. If you listen to more progressive, engaging, informational and edutaining, educational and entertaining sound, right? Then it shifts how you think, how your meditations, your movements, where your behaviors are and persons need to recognize it affects the soul self element. And I wanna make sure I explain that clearly, but the ethos, the essence of how you even live and present culture. And to hear that Imba is already doing that and I know that there are others, and I just want to just say thank you, you know, Asante Sana, of course, and you will teach me other ways of saying that, that yes. we can begin to help persons know the importance of art, the importance of the creative arts and the creative arts on its impact on society and humanity, yes? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and the voice that can come out of Africa, like when I heard, Building Africa with Love, just that title. Even with all of my scheduling issues, I'm so grateful that you were able to, you know, have the introduction from our first assistant president general of the Universal Negro Improvement Association African Communities League, RC 2020, Baba Sangor Bae. When he sent me the message on WhatsApp, I just needed yeah. to get to you to get the date because I already, <laughs> I really felt a, a linkage with anyone that's building Africa with love because that's another layer of the importance of what you've just said in terms of what Imba is doing, you know, some of your other production work with SABC. And to know that a large network like SABC is even giving a additional support and platform, that's phenomenal. Yeah. And we wanna, you know, extend our thanks and congratulations to them. And what the ministries of tourism are or are not doing, you know, what you say, Ministry of Tourism, here we have a Department of Tourism. And many times our respective governments are, are guarded as well as guided. I want to say that they're guarded as well yeah. as guided on what is permissible, like what they're allowed to really put out, right? And as long as we remember that those institutional machinery pieces exist, then as on our other side, you know, yes, we're artists, yes, we're cultural creatives, and yes, we're creative production persons. On the activism side, there's a side, especially as African women, that, mm -hmm. and you'll hear us say it all the time, African women lead. African women must lead. So all this gender imbalance, the fact that we had to have the international <laughs> month, <laughs> women's month, yes. breaking the bias, just the fact that we had to say that, that yes. we have to say break the bias, and hmm, that speaks volumes to what is, you know, what sisters, women around the globe are experiencing. And I would like for you to speak to how that's being handled, you know, and, and ultimately, what would you like to see if you, beyond you know, money, cost, whatever, what would you like to see implemented, effective, what is today, right, effective March 13th? Within the, the woman leadership space. 
Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I suppose it's a step in the right direction that they celebrating International Women's Day, you know, but I do feel it's something that sh it, we shouldn't even have a day uh, set aside for this. It's so, but anyway, be that as it may, um, everyone needs to be intentional every single month. You know, um, these, these stories, these celebrations need to be there every single month. The potential that women possess should not just come to the fore on certain days. Um, I think women need to now, not just women, because I think we are trying to push into these spaces. Uh, we, we're trying to fight our way into these spaces. Uh, albeit there's some resistance, uh, especially if you go into corporate, but I think uh, there, there, there should now be a change within the corporate space. I mean, it's been years now. Uh, there's no need for this resistance and this um, friction between the genders within the space, uh, whether it's the arts or corporate, for us to have problems. It should just be something that is known. People, I think women have shown their capabilities over the years. We've had people like Mama, Miriam Makeba in South Africa, we had Winnie Mandela, you know, we had powerhouses mm -hmm. that have shown what happens when we have women in leadership roles. Um, it's, I mean, it's high time that we start just running with this, you know, um, government, uh, the work environment, everyone needs to just acknowledge, embrace it, and let's just continue with life. I think what is the biggest problem perhaps is that many people are afraid, especially the male species, they, they're very threatened by the abilities that women possess. And the easiest way to get rid of it is to, you know, suppress it, you know, make them feel useless. That's how you break a person down and make them feel less than who they are by con continuously focusing on things that are unnecessary, making women feel weak for whatever reason. But I think women need to continue fighting and pushing through those boundaries uh, every single day, every single day. They should not just, we shouldn't wait for someone to give us permission to now show what we are capable of. It should be right. something that we do every single day. Um, and, and, and I think that's, that's how we can uh, change things by repeatedly showing and showing up as well. You know, um, I, I made this realization the other day. I don't know if it's because I was turning 40 or what, but I, I realized. <laughs> I'm gonna keep celebrating. I'm trying not to go up the rough, you know, so it just yes. goes like this, right? Cause that's major, that's major. Yes, I, I, it I'm, really I'm is. Well, welcome to the other side of 39. <laughs> There you go. How yes. about that? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and I really, I was saying to myself that I'm not doing anyone a favor by playing sport because sometimes you are so afraid to, to, to stick out uh, as a person or your talents or your gifts because you maybe for some reason feel bad for the person next to you or you want to fit in for whatever reason, you know. Um, but the reality is it's not helping anyone. Um, we are sitting with terrible households. We are sitting with problems. We're sitting with a lot of moral ills because people are not stepping up. They're not getting into the spaces that they need to be getting into. So uh, maybe if we become more aware of that mm -hmm. and be intentional in everything that we do on a daily basis as women, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, who cares who says what, you know? If you're on the right track and you know exactly what it is, what the mission is, what, what the outcomes are at the end of that mm -hmm. whole entire journey, why not go for it, you know? Um, we have a lot of skills as well that we possess. Let's, let's impart them. You know, there are, there are younger girls, there are younger women that also need this knowledge that we possess as people. Let's start sharing the knowledge, the experiences that we've gone through. Let's share these things so that people are empowered you know, don't sit with the information. Correct. Share it. <laughs> yeah. I think I think that that's how we can bring about the change that we need. Okay, beautiful. I I'm, you mentioned several different elements and the we like to have those directives. And I'd like for you to 
be able to share some bullets and encourage persons to do something different from today to tomorrow to next week. So the next time they hear you or they hear us or they hear about this discussion on how do we move international? Because yes, International Women's Day is March 8th and that's been in place you know, for over a century and it's been observed and it comes out of a very, uh, a very feminist, let's be very clear, it comes out of a very um, Eu European, very Eurasian feminist series of movements that ultimately were pushed forward to another layer another level, you know, connected to labor affairs and, and equity, not just equality, but equity for women, yes. And at the same time, you know, International Women's Month has become an unofficial observance in the month of March to surround activity, because we cannot do that much in one day. Yeah. And so it, kind of, it, and it extends from the beginning of the month all the way to the end of the month. And there's other observances, whether they're international days or international month observances or international year or international decade observances of the United Nations and its various entities, you know, UNESCO, um, UNA, et cetera. It also is linked to the activism that is grounded in women. You know, when, mm -hmm. I, when I heard you say Winnie Mandela, then I always come to Queen Mother Mama, how I came to know her, you know, is Mama Sabukwe, you know, and, and the work that she was instrumental to leading for many, many decades, you know, within the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. And there's others. I mean, that's something that as we move forward, it's good to have that list so that when mm -hmm. we're calling these ancestors, as well as referring to those that are doing the work now, because that's why we will be saying Sister Queen, Mother, and KK Funani, because that's the work that you do now. That's why we will say Senate Dr. Queen Mother Chensira Kahina. We'll be saying our names because we're doing our best to leave a legacy that is permanent, right? Mm -hmm. What we're doing may not be considered part of the mainstream. However, yeah. the permanence of making sure that the type of music that we promote is uplifting and revolutionary and progressive and holistic and healing and educational and informational. It's important for that instead of producing a type of music and or any form of art that is counter-revolutionary, counter-productive and hmm. not helping us to grow because we're supposed to be able to restore our ancestral power, our ancestral sovereignty now. We're supposed to pull from those ancestral legacies. You know, the good, the parts that are most appropriate. And when I say appropriate, for those that misunderstand English, I'm saying we do things where they're equitable, where they are just, where they're grounded in truth. And of course, that there's balance and harmony. Did you see where I went? Ma'at. Truth, justice, order, reciprocity, balance, divine righteousness, and harmony. You can pick any of the seven. When you fuse them together, however, then we're moving in the same direction as our illustrious guest, Sister Queen Nkeke has shared with us. I, I hope the persons get that. The other piece that was really interesting as I was listening to you and I, it lent itself, I was gonna ask a question about what keeps you engaged in these affairs around Pan-Africanism because I know that you also carry you know, work around being involved in other Pan-African, Global African, Black nationalist movements. And on, in my capacity as the High Commissioner General of the UNIA ACLRC 2020, my area is the Caribbean and the Americas. However, because of the work that I've been involved in in more than 30 countries in the African continent, that also kind of Co coordinates inside of, I should say, it's there's a synergy as we're building relationships. I would love for you to speak about some of the other works that you're able to be involved in around that Pan-African, global African piece. And of course, keeping women aware that African women lead. I will keep sharing that hashtag until it reaches a million. African women lead. I'm telling everyone, hashtag yeah. African women leave. This is our time. 
And with everything that's been done around us, to us, through us, that we're still experiencing beyond that trauma, greatness and restoration of our sovereign power and, and strength is right there. It's like, right, it's, it's already here. We're, navig yeah. we're learning how to navigate to make it really shine and fully manifest. But please share the work that you've been involved in in some of the Pan-African affairs, please. Um, I've actually been the Pan-African Federalist Movement. Uh, I don't know if you know. Quite familiar. But, uh, but, yeah, Jumai. <laughs> I don't know if I okay. yes. uh, I was actually pleasantly um, surprised by, I forgot who gave me his details, but mm -hmm. I also connected with him through an interview. Because on this platform, Building Africa's Love has actually uh, it's made me connect with amazing people. Uh, and these are people that are busy in the spaces within the continent and uh, the diaspora, you know, um, making the changes that are needed for our people to emancipate themselves, you know. And uh, I'm part of the Pan-African Federalist Movement uh, currently. And while the, I think the, the activities that they have within the Southern uh, within our side is we, we sometimes have these workshops because we're connecting, we connect as you and I are connecting online, uh, sharing ideas, what they're doing in which country they're busy with. So I've, I've been very busy with that, uh, yeah. trying to listen in and, you know, just learning what's going on within these spaces. Okay. Within my own immediate environment, it's building Africa with love that really does just uh, occupy my day-to-day -day life where I bring stories from the different continent, from the continent, different areas, to people to know what's happening out there, uh, the positive stories and the changes that are being made towards our existence. Uh, I, I bring that to people and I'm hoping to grow this platform. We want to move on to television. Uh, with this very same show to reach another audience, obviously, because currently we're just streaming and we are also on um, DSTV. But mm -hmm. yeah, we're reaching the audiences that we're reaching, but we want to just grow our space. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's more or less what I am busy with within my space, okay. in the Pan-African space. Uh, okay. Obviously, I'm also doing my job as... Uh, project executive, the musician, CEO, and all of that, okay. playing my part in the community that I'm in. But yeah, that's the long and short of it. <laughs> well, th that's a wonderful short long because there's, we could easily continue for another five hours on the content of what's being done. And I would like for our viewers to just be aware of some of the different spaces that um, I'm sharing these just so that persons that, you know, YouTube does not advocate for us putting in the actual links inside of that chat. So I encourage persons to look at the other platforms that we're sharing this on. And I just felt it was important to see some of the range of activities and posts and engagements and how recent yeah. so that persons can actually see. You can go to Emba on Facebook. That's one platform. And of course, they share on other spaces. I think it's also important for persons to just be aware that there are, you know, some of the other organizations, as we're starting to speak about them, it's important to look at some of those spaces and those that information as well. Because sometimes we don't look at one another's platforms, even if it is only in social media, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, StumbleUpon, etc. Or now everybody's in TikTok. I got to navigate intergenerational reality. We're getting there. We're getting there. Because I, <laughs> when I finally learned these six, it's like a new six. So we're, we're yeah. navigating how to expand our messages in these different platforms. And we yeah. utilize YouTube because YouTube allows us to at least document very clearly. If persons want to know a little bit about Imba, a little bit about what Sister Queen and Keke is involved in, you can look at this broadcast because it is available. And we encourage you, show support find her website, find her links, support the work of Imba. You may be an artist or you may know of an artist, introduce, let's cross pollinate and really strengthen what we do. I think it's important for persons to look at the South, the essayhistory.org site <clears throat> that provides a lot of links, a lot of information for persons that may not know much about South Africa so that 
our lens is wider than just what happened in apartheid, which was significant. However, look at what's manifesting now. What are some of the great opportunities and engagements that we can have in that South African space? You may hear a person say, Azania, so that you don't get confused, right? Because yeah. sometimes we tend to only use the terms for naming our African spaces that have been provided by Eurasian culture, et cetera, and so forth. So the vernacular would be different and the meaning more powerful when we start to call it with our own ancestral names. But just so persons understand a little bit about the Pan-Africanist Congress, this is another space that you can look at to just be able to know how we put some of these conversations and our, our work together. I know that you mentioned the, uh, and this is not their only site, I wanna make sure that I highlight that, but this is just one of the platforms where you can learn about the Pan-African Federalist Movement okay. and some of the activities, some of the manifestos. The reason when you said, if I'm familiar, is that I, I have been in PAFM in previous years and it's, it's in 2018, we were in Ghana for the 60th anniversary of the All African People's Conference of, of course, 1958. And there was a convening, not only within the university structure uh, at the University of Ghana in Lagon, but there was also the PAFM hosting its meetings, its international convenings. And so in that capacity, I was representing the Caribbean and we had a statement that also was here on this particular website, but just so persons know that there is a manifesto, that it is in multiple languages. And I'm sure that there's an, an introduction to making sure that we don't just focus on the Eurasian languages of French, English, Spanish, Portuguese, Dutch, that we make sure that we start to put these in, in Zulu, in Kiswahili, in Arab, in Basa, in, in the languages that are very African. And just so the persons can know, so you can easily go to africanpublius.com and that way you can also find out some information about the PAFM. And then I've been mentioning it, but I just didn't say it out loud, but yes. this work is also grounded and linked to organizations that have been in place, you know, following the legacy of the Honorable Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, you know, and the, his charge, his declaration, his decree, if you will, for there to be an all African people's revolutionary party. And, with, and I encourage people to go to the AAPRP International website to just get an understanding of what the party is and how it's tied to all these different conversations and programs that we're referencing, you know, right here. And specifically, um, I'm going to that site right now, just would like to make sure that there is an all African women's revolutionary union and that it's important to see as the party is building and especially with things that are manifesting now that we don't overlook the all African women's revolutionary union, um, which will be having its uh, various programs and activities forthcoming. And before I am told that I did not mention the places where people can at least get some information about the UNIA ACL RC 2020, you'll see the Re UNIA ACL Rehabilitating Committee under the, the leadership of President General Baba Akili Malik Nkrumah. And I encourage persons to, you know, ask questions, learn more. This is how we are able to connect with IMBA because it's through these different organizational activities and the mm -hmm. organizational work we're involved in across the sea, across the water. And I encourage people, you know, there's a lot that's happening. One of the thrusts with the UNIA, ACLRC 2020, they've had a recent activities, you know, talking about the Russia, NATO, Ukraine conflict, but they also have a host again, highlighting Fela's mom, <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Queen Mother Fumi <laughs> Lyo Ransom Kuti. You know, there's a lot of just information so that people can know. Noticing what's going on in different parts of the globe. This is happening right now as we're speaking in West Papua New Guinea. And they use music and creative arts to even get the message out because mm -hmm. the situations there have become so um, challenging and so you know pecu peculiar beyond measure. So this is a great time for us to be able to share as, as colleagues, as artists, as revolutionary activists, as women, as, 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 as queens. And when we're saying queens, for those persons that get twisted by that term, and you, I understand that English is a peculiar yeah. language. Yeah? And so we're learning how to say those terms in other places. So you may hear us say 
Natert, or persons may say Nasut, or there's other ways that we can express it, but just because we're using the English language, when we're saying queen, we're not speaking of that feudal governing monarchical yeah. kind of presence that does not do for their people that they serve. A authentic queen, be specific, an African mm -hmm. queen has to be even more giving, more responsible, more passionate, more compassionate, and more disciplined to be a servant to her yep. people. See, that's where we, so when you hear it here in Building Legacy, you hear me say queen coming out of my mouth. I'm speaking of those sister queens, those sister queen mothers, those sister queen grandmothers. In some instances, we still have amongst us sister queen great grandmothers that are keeping that revolutionary fervor, that respect for self, for family, for village, community, nation, government, society, civilization, and humanity at the center of how we move. So when we say International Women's Month and we reference our beloved queens, that's what we're talking about. We're not speaking of the, you know, be up on the Barbie's pedestal and that you're above the people that you, again, that you serve. Yes. Not that you, because when we're saying African women lead, because that came up too. Well, what do you mean by that? Where the minute? And I said, pause. When we say African women lead, of course, mm -hmm. African women know the place of our men. Notice what I just said. Mm -hmm. And maybe I have to add other adjectives. So conscious, revolutionary, uh, proactive, conscious, spiritually grounded African women. If you need all those adjectives, fine. But essentially that's too many, that's too much for the hashtag. So we're just saying African women lead because we know that that is to be complementary with our African men. We know that as African women, we have to look out for and embrace those things that are good for our youth, our children, our elders, those that are in need, and that we recognize how to handle diversity equity and inclusion, the common terms now, beyond what people try to make as a limitation, that is authentically grounded in our African ancestral, most progressive and revolutionary experience. Like that's, so, yep. so those persons that didn't understand African women lead, that's all we're saying, because it cannot be that African women are continually exposed to forms of gender-based violence and rape and torture and assassination, execution, mm -hmm. abuse, and that that's normal. And we're just gonna, uh -huh. it don't go so, it don't go so. We have a term here, it don't go so at all. Just like yeah. that does not go so at all. So in a friendly way, in a most mm -hmm. powerfully compassionate way, we encourage all viewers, all listeners, Help us to get that message across that African women lead. Some people have African women must lead. Some people spell Africa, A-F-R-I-C-A. Some spell it with a K. Okay. Some spell okay. it Africa. However you get it. Mm -hmm. And see, you've shared that. And what means in less than an hour. <laughs> <laughs> One time. Okay, so. We're getting ready to close. I, I realized I did not desire to, we agreed to an hour and I'm very thankful for you sharing your time, your expertise, your energy, and especially as your family surrounds you, celebrating you. I, <laughs> we're definitely <laughs> sending well wishes yeah. for your Earth Strong, your birthday. And we also pray that we can keep this linkage together until we yes. get an opportunity to meet in a physical space and do some work together, do some building of our Definitely. So any final commentaries you'd like to share, make sure you give us your contacts that persons can reach you, any of your okay. social media tags, please. All right. Um, I think if you can, if this time, just to share the African God on Libya, um, the background of the song, it's a very, very, it's very close to my heart. Um, the specific song, not that the rest are not, but it's, it speaks about the situation in Libya. I don't know if many remember when they had slaves, African slaves, after the death of Muammar Gaddafi. 
uh, we then uh, conceived a song called the African God in Libya, and we personified the African God um, as someone who is speaking to Libya, uh, almost reprima reprimanding, it's a lament of how sad the African God was on the situation and that Libya, having had a, such a beautiful history of uh, assisting Africa, of wanting you know, the progress within Africa, Africa to grow and to emancipate itself, to now all of a sudden have this situation where they're enslaving our African brothers. African God in Libya then speaks and they, he's just telling them how disappointed he is in them. And then at the end, he will punish Libya for what they are doing. Um, it's a very, it's, it's, it's a very poetic song. <laughs> uh, it is my wish if you are able to, to just play that song. But well, in closing on my side. Okay, well, you know, we're, we're getting, we're getting there. So just, you have, you have open time so that I can produce it in the quality that I need to have it here. Oh, because that's okay. what's powerful is that the intention has been to keep sharing those messages and that type of music and that kind of sound. And what's funny to me is that only because of the current circumstances happening around this zone, it's very interesting to me that um, that sound, I thought that I, I really thought that I had already downloaded it, but it's not here. But Don't please, worry. You know, but, tell, but, no, but tell persons about that message because sometimes we don't get it. Sometimes we just don't properly understand and, and, and envelope how to move those kinds of things forward. So, so please share that with us. Okay, so uh, on the Libyan situation, it's actually a, lem a lament by the African God on, on the Libyan situation. It's history with African liberation movements that up his death and the enslavement of Africans after his brutal murder by the US and its allies. The punishment is by the African God to the perpetrators of evil to the black nations. Uh, there are a few lines that I share there as I sing and I'm personifying the African God. It's not me per se singing from the top to bottom but the African God himself. When I say, oh, I love you, Libya. I love mm -hmm. you, Libya. You know, I love you, Libya. Uh, for, for, for their efforts that they have uh, played within the struggle on the African continent before Muammar Gaddafi was murdered. So the entire song takes on that tone. It uh, then, I think the purpose of it is to see the contribution that Libya actually had before the untimely death of Muammar Gaddafi uh, in the struggle and the liberation of our people. Uh, and unfortunately it was cut too short. Um, I think the West and its allies saw that it was a serious threat to them that Africa was actually going to get somewhere if Africans united as Muammar Gaddafi was hoping and having the one currency. Uh, and as you know, as history always um, has shown us, all our leaders that have had this one message have always been removed. So right. that's-, right. that's well, no, I did, but I want to thank you for just giving us enough time and opportunity to locate this because I think when you have a piece called The African God, on Libya. We're going to play that. And we definitely want to thank you, Sister Queen and KK Fulani of Umba. Thank you. I want to thank your family for sharing your time with us. And we're going to listen to this song. And before we close out, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I love you, Libya, Libya. Place that fought for. 
for freedom but today except Asante. We give thanks for you sharing that. I just need to let you drop some of the artists. The vocals, amazing. The orchestration, and this is coming through as an artist. I'm really grateful to have been able to. We have an exclusive here on Building Legacy <laughs> where we got to broadcast. Right. This was wonderful. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. Thank you so much for Thank just you. giving us the opportunity to share that. We look forward to our next time. Thank you. And the lead vocals are our illustrious sister queen. <laughs> Me. And KK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. We have, there's so much more that we have to do together. And just remember yeah. that culture promotes humanity. Land is our foundation and spiritual harmony unifies us. We're really looking forward to you joining us. If you have more questions, people can just look for you on social media under your name, correct? Yes, they can. Uh, all the platforms, it's Ngiki Funani. Okay. So on Facebook, it's Ngiki. Yes, yes. There we go. So that, that way you can have that. Look forward to the next time. And remember that building legacy allows for us to help one another build legacy that are lasting for eternity. And with that, we thank you again. We're really looking forward to the next opportunity. Thank Have you a wonderful so much. Yeah, this you, has been a tour. Too.